No, no, no godly character, no nobility, no righteousness, no virtue in this woman. Uh, sex was the only thing on her mind, and she she was used to getting her way. I think the scripture kind of paints that picture pretty clearly. Um, and because she couldn't have her way with him, he was going to pay for that. And it's not unlike our enemy, Satan, the devil, if you will. Um, if he can't get us to sin, then he'll lie about us sinning. Je Jesus said that, you know, if they if they done all these things to me, they'll do them to you as well. But he said, blessed are what you when men falsely accuse you. And I don't know if you out there have ever been falsely accused. I have been in my life. And to be honest with you, there wasn't a darn thing I could do about it. Um, because if people have it in their heart that they're going to believe something, then they're going to believe it. Uh, and so all you can do when you know that you've done right, all you can do is trust God and know that he will deliver you. Now, Joseph was rewarded for his righteousness and not sleeping with uh, Potiphar's wife with jail time. <laughs> it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a hard pill to swallow. Um, but yet, he was innocent. And he could have probably even after she accused him, he, he might have been able to make it right with her by sleeping with her and say, oh, don't don't accuse me and get me in trouble. Here, I'll sleep with you or whatever. Um, but his heart was not on worldly gain. His heart was not on what other people would think. His heart wasn't on the easy out. He could have had an easy out. Maybe he knew that she would do this and chose anyway. I don't know. But his heart was on his God, and he was willing to pay any price to stay right with his God. <clears throat> now, we don't know what his reward was in that. Um, you and I, as believers in Christ, know a lot more about eternal life, know a lot more about the kingdom of heaven and our reward for serving God than, than possibly he did at that time. But he must have known something. Amen? Amen because he was willing to sacrifice everything to hold on to his integrity, his relationship with the living God. And I know, and, and maybe you know, that God will not abandon us when we put him first. Amen? Although it may seem that way, because it did seem that way for him. So it's, it's again, Genesis 39, 15 to 23, and it came to pass... When he heard that, I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. Um, and she spoke unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, after this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. Um, we, the movies that you've seen on TV, they, they kind of say that Potiphar really didn't want to do it to Joseph, that he probably believed Joseph over his wife. They kind of paint that picture a little bit. They, they give the indication that he didn't really believe his wife. The scripture doesn't show that. <clears throat> Pardon me. The scripture says that he was angry at Joseph, that he, his wrath was kindled against him. So, to me, the scripture says that he absolutely did believe his wife, and he threw Joseph in jail. And so, here Joseph's heart is broken the first time, when his brothers uh, betray him, throw him into a well, wanted to kill him, then sold him into slavery. Then his heart's broken the second time. Because he lost favor with Jacob the first time. He lost favor with Potiphar the second time. And he's thrown into prison. And all these times, there's no evidence in the scriptures whatsoever that he ever did anything wrong to anybody. Um, which gives a similar indication with, with our Messiah, with our Savior, excuse me, our Savior, Jesus Christ. He was without sin. And yet he opened not his mouth. And he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. Amen.
But in uh, in Genesis uh, 39, 21, where it says he was there in the prison, and then in 21 it says, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. So again, in a sense, he didn't know or keep track, really, of anything. He trusted Joseph so much that he didn't even really consider himself with, with the, the, the work of the prison. The scripture kind of gives us that indication that he just left it all in Joseph's care because Joseph was such a noble character. Amen. Um, interesting thought. Jesus crucified, descended, set the prisoners free. Amen. Now here, the prisoners, <laughs> they're not going to get out. But uh, in, in a sense, the, the presence of God was with them. Where, where the presence of God is with you, you're free. Amen. So, interesting parallel there. It says, The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. So again, and we're going to end with this. See, when you won't participate with sin, sin will then try to remove move you from its company so you won't expose it, which is exactly what Potiphar's wife did. Joseph wouldn't participate, and so she had to do something about him because um, now that he, he definitely wouldn't participate, he knew her secret. He knew that she was an adulterer. Obviously, Potiphar didn't know, or he wouldn't have been angry at Joseph. You know, Had he known the way his wife was, he, he wouldn't have believed her. Uh, and so... Joseph then becomes a loaded gun to her because he won't participate in her sin. She's going to have him exposed falsely just to get him out of the picture. Amen? And that's what we often suffer as believers is, is uh, when we refuse to do the things that the world wants us to do, yeah, there, there's going to be a, a price. You know, and it's hard, to be honest with you. It's really hard. And I, I was telling uh, my sister the other day, I, I pay way more for being a Christian <laughs> <laughs> than I ever paid when uh, when I was in the world, you know, because I didn't ha I didn't have to pay for all my sins when I was in the world, and and the Lord showed mercy on me, and He paid for me, and and but as a believer, it's like I pay for being a believer, and I get a lot more grief often for being a believer and standing up for righteousness than I ever got when I was in the world. But you know, I can live with that um, because there's no shame in that. There's no shame. When people come against you and you know it's because of the Lord's sake, and you know it's for for His righteousness and for His cause, and you know some of those people they they do see truth in you, they do see love in you, they do see God's righteousness in you, and of course you don't take any credit because you, you know it's not you that did it, you know it's Him working through you that did it, but you know sometimes He gives you a, a, what's the word for it? Uh, he gives you a glimpse into eternity and when you see people that and I've had people that have even challenged me in my faith and have come against me for my faith and when I didn't fight them back with hatred per se but rather you know I, I, I wouldn't back down if it was something I believed I was right about but when I love them in spite of their possible hatred or animosity toward me they saw not me but they saw the, the Lord in me, you know, because in my flesh, like the Apostle Paul says, there is no good thing. I mean, if it was just left up to me, I would definitely fight back, you know. I'd definitely get angry back, and I would, I would, I'd become bitter and and and, uh, and and angry and wrathful or whatever, however you want to call it. But when I let Christ rule in me, then I know that I can love those who persecute me and see all manner of evil against me falsely for His sake and this, that, and the other. And when I do that, um. They, they see that it's his love that's showing them love back. Um, and, that, and, and with that, they become convicted in their heart. And they realize God is real. Because, you know, if they knew me, they'd know that I'm not capable of that kind of love. They'd know I'm not capable of that kind of patience. And so when, they, when, when I do love by the grace of God back, his power through me, his power through you, um, they see Christ. Amen. And, 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 and some of them will turn to him. And so 
we'll see as we continue with the story of Joseph is that thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people were, 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 uh, were fed with, within this story of physical bread, but it saved their lives. And it's a, it's a physical story, it's a true story, but it has so many symbolic meanings. You and I, when we, when we go through what we have to go through for the kingdom of God, and God eventually brings us up, and people see what we've gone through, <clears throat> and they see God bringing us up, they see the, real, the reality of who He is. They see that He really is real, that He exists. And then they turn to him, and, and ultimately they're fed with a spiritual bread, which is, which is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the bread of life. And so you and I are like the new Josephs, who people can be filled, not with us, but through us, with, with the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ, and they're satisfied. Amen. So it's worth whatever. It's, it's worth whatever God decrees for each of our individual lives, and that'll, that'll vary. So, anyway, enough of my babbling, <laughs> babbling brook. <laughs> we said out of your belly will show rivers of living water, right? <laughs> enough of my uh, carrying on, and, and uh, until next time you're watching Freedom, God bless you. That's the end of this chapter, and we'll pick up next time. Thank you.